Now, live from Dallas and Fort Worth, this is a special edition of CBS 11 News at 6, Reopening Texas. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Dunbar. Thank you for joining us tonight for our special edition of CBS 11 News at 6. As you just heard, reopening Texas. We're two weeks in and starting to see some signs of life throughout North Texas. Parking lots are filling up, some of them packed in some places. Families are heading back into stores and restaurants, some of them cautiously, some of them not. Employees glad to be earning a paycheck, but anxious about what the future might hold. The freedom of an old life we know gone, replaced with a new evolving normal that looks and feels different to some people even a bit strange but even as businesses open their doors and the economy starts to wake up the process has proven to be slow and difficult and it does not come without risks COVID-19 has not gone away the number of infections continues to rise and that new world is bringing on new challenges and sometimes confusion where exactly can you go right now what are the restrictions and what are your rights as a business owner an employee or a customer during the next half hour we're going to take time to take a look at the balance of getting back on our feet economically without sacrificing the health of anyone including our most vulnerable to start out i team reporter brian new has a close look at how reopening our state has come with great optimism as well as concern for weeks a silence swept across north texas businesses closed people stayed home but then it's time to set a new course. That silence was broken. A course that responsibly opens up business in Texas. Two weeks ago, Governor Greg Abbott laid out a plan. Texas was about to embark on a balancing act. The state would attempt to wake up the economy and at the same time try to keep the virus from running loose. It's nice that we're able to finally, you know, kind of be, you know, free again. For many, reopening has been met with celebration. I wanted to cry. <laughs> For others, it's been met with reservations. We don't want to blow up the curve. We're opening too fast, some say. For others, it's been too slow. I'm not doing anything criminal, so they cannot arrest me. How people reacted to a single salon owner's defiance of state orders perhaps reveals just how polarizing this has all become. And yet, despite our differences, the goal for most is the same. A healthy economy and healthy residents. Two weeks into the governor's plan, and here's what we know on whether we're moving closer to that goal. I think everybody's ready to bust out of here. <laughs> While many businesses are showing signs of life, it's been far from business as usual. Malls and shopping centers, despite being allowed to reopen, are still fairly empty. And restaurant owners say restricting them to 25% capacity is no way to make money. We would love to host more people. This is the max we can take. Next week, gyms and offices are set to join the list of businesses allowed to open. However, that still leaves some left out. There are no plans on when bars are allowed to reopen, which some owners say seems unfair. Lisa Parker says she can space out her customers just as well as a restaurant can. We're going to do what we have to, but, um, you know, the whole thing is we just got to have that chance to do it. And then there are businesses that, regardless of the governor's orders, won't be reopening. It just feels lonely and sad, and it, it makes me sad. As the owner of a play center for children, Janae Molichek says it's hard to imagine this room filled with dozens of kids anytime soon, which is why, as Texas reopens, her business is closing for good. I think I just had to kind of swallow that pill of knowing that, that it's over. Health officials say it's too early to know how much the reopening has impacted the spread of the virus. People who tested positive for COVID-19 today likely got infected two weeks ago. Most agree cases and deaths will likely go up. By how much depends on how well Texas balances setting you free with keeping you safe. With every phase of reopening, the state has been putting out these checklists for businesses. This one here is for gyms and exercise facilities that can begin to open next week. And Doug, these checklists are fairly extensive. This one here talks about everything from making sure you screen your employees to providing cleaning equipment next to all of the exercise equipment. Brian, I'm curious one thing you've followed so closely since the state has started allowing more businesses to reopen. Are we seeing any kind of decline in unemployment claims right now? 
No, at least not yet, Doug. And part of that is because many people that have returned to work, they've returned just part time. So they would still be receiving some unemployment benefits. Recently, we've also seen city and county employees laid off. And here in Texas, the oil industry is such a large employer and they are still laying off people at record levels. Hard to see and hard to hear. Brian, thank you very much for the update. So far, nearly a thousand COVID-19 related lawsuits have been filed across the country. That is according to a Virginia law firm that is tracking the cases. Now, a Texas senator is helping draft a bill to limit what he is calling frivolous lawsuits. Jack Fink reporting. Our sales are down 60%. And we're just fighting to stay alive. Okay. At Desperado's Mexican restaurant in Garland, owner Mike Levy continues with his takeout and curbside pickup business only. Thank you very much. He hasn't reopened his restaurant to dine in customers under the 25% occupancy rule. So before we do open up that door, we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Levy says while he checks his employees' temperature every day when they come to work, regularly sanitizes the restaurant and requires everyone to wear a mask, he still worries that once he reopens more of his business, he could be sued by a customer if he or she is later diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, that, that's a little scary. It's a little overwhelming. We simply cannot allow a flood of frivolous lawsuits to harm On the U.S. Senate floor workers, Monday afternoon, Texas Senator John Cornyn discussed legislation recovery. he's drafting that would protect businesses and frontline health care workers from baseless yet costly lawsuits related to the virus. And the best way to do that is by fighting, following the guidance of, uh, of people like the Center for Disease Control. And if people do that, then I don't think they should be... Uh, uh, be held liable. Under the bill, in order for businesses to have their liability limited, they'd be required to comply with public health guidelines regarding cleaning and protective gear. Senator Cornyn says the legislation would not protect businesses or owners who engage in grossly negligent, willful, or criminal misconduct. And frankly, I think it would be bad law. Dallas attorney Chad Ruback says if businesses are doing the right thing, they're already protected under the existing standard and that the new system being developed would be a dramatic change. A gross negligence standard elevates the burden that an individual would need to satisfy to such a high level that it would be almost impossible for the individual to prevail. Justin. As for Mike Levy, yes, he says he likes here, the sir. certainty the new legislation might bring, especially because COVID-19 has created so much uncertainty. I like it. Uh, I know personally with our restaurants, we are following every rule that we can. Uh, the Texas governor, lieutenant governor, and House Speaker have already sent a letter to congressional leaders asking for their support for a bill offering liability protections for businesses and health care workers in the next COVID-19 relief package. Jack Fink, CBS 11 News. There's a lot of debate over this discussion when it comes to blanket immunity, and we want to dive a little bit further into this and get a little bit of a deeper discussion with uh, employment and consumer attorney Megan McCaig. Megan, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having uh, me. Let me first ask you, say I go to dinner and I'm later diagnosed with COVID-19, and in that scenario, how do I prove that the restaurant perhaps was responsible for me getting sick? I think it's going to be difficult if you are going a lot of places. So you're going to either have to keep a good record of the places that you've gone, uh, or you're going to have to somehow show that your visit to the restaurant caused your contraction of COVID-19. So that could be difficult. And if we get into that realm of wanting to document where we've been for the, for the just in case moment, how do we go about that? Is it a cell phone picture of me holding the menu, the date, something like that? Anything would be sufficient if you're really concerned about this. I just think, you know, it's going to be difficult to show that you got it at the restaurant as opposed to at the grocery store. And that's kind of the, the challenge I think that people are going to face when they're trying to uh, hold someone liable for contracting COVID-19. Can I ask you about the standpoint of the employees? Uh, we've candidly heard from a lot via social media and email in the last week or so. A lot of people nervous to return to work. They don't necessarily feel comfortable. What 
what's the best practice maybe in approaching something like that with your boss? I think going to your boss or HR and making sure that, that your employer is complying with CDC guidelines, with uh, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, uh, with state protocols would be an important first step to make sure that they're doing everything that they can to keep you as safe as possible. Can you touch on for us, uh, parents of children, parents, uh, maybe they can finally get back to work and they're in a situation where they need childcare. What's best advice for those people? Essentially, if you work for a company that has fewer than 500 employees, uh, you are entitled to up to 10 weeks of partially paid leave if you need that leave to care for a child. What do you see in an overall sense as the biggest challenge right now between employers and employees? I think overall everyone has the same goal, which is being able to get back to work. And so I think it's just the logistical challenge of uh, trying to make employees feel comfortable and keeping them safe while at the same time, you know, they need to, obviously the businesses need to earn money and they need to, you know, be able to pay their employees. Our thanks to Megan McCaig for the insights and for those still working from home, going back into the office, we know could look a lot different. The potential changes coming to your office space and what one company is doing to make it safer for everyone. Also, keeping children entertained, that can be a big challenge. You already know that. But three locally based businesses are banding together to make it as easy as possible for both kids and the parents. Their plan as Texas reopens coming up.